Geometry, I think we're rolling. We're on mod three, topic one, lesson one, page 456. This is the last video for lesson one. And thank you if you've watched all the way through. Go ahead and set up your paper, pause right here and go ahead and add to your paper what I've already added and then resume the video. And uh, I'll show you the bottom half of the screen and then pause again and then I'll eventually talk my way through it, all right? Give yourself space, by the way, before you pause around these three corners because I'm gonna use those three as my explanation in the video. Here's the bottom half. Pause. I'm assuming you're back, so let's go. What I did is I identified on the star shape where every corner was. And one thing you gotta know successfully is that the first number in a coordinate is the X coordinate, and that's side to side, right, left. The second number is up, down, and that's consistent, otherwise you start getting different directions. It's like telling somebody to travel from our city to another one, and you mix up a right turn with a left turn, or a go straight with a left when you should have said something else. So we don't wanna do that. We always wanna consistently make sure that the first number in the ordered pair is from the center, how many spaces to the left or the right, and the second number is how many spaces up and down. And so one of the ones that was kind of tricky was B, you don't go left or right, you just stop and you go straight down. So the first number is zero because we're not traveling left or right. And the second number is how far down we traveled from the origin, zero, zero. We can use that logic right now to answer the coordinate of G. We're not traveling to the left or right side to side at all. So the first number is zero. And then we're gonna travel up from the origin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Which means our second number, our up and down is eleven. Let's do that for F and for H. In fact, um, go ahead and skip forward like 20 seconds. I'm gonna write down F's coordinate and H's coordinate. You see if you wrote F and H the same way. I messed up. There we go. Still messed up. Oh my gosh. Okay. I made some mistakes. Mistakes were made. Maybe you saw them. Maybe you went back to watch again. You're like, did he really? Yeah, I did. Um, first of all, this is a plus. I wrote a minus. But I even switched my coordinates. I forgot that it's two to the right and then three up. Two should go first. Three should go second. See? Make sure you check your work. I'm living dangerously by doing math and pen. Now, with that in mind, let's answer question one. Stuff is happening outside. So with this one, F prime is gonna be this coordinate, but it's gonna be changed by a factor, a scale factor, that's the vocabulary word, a scale factor of three. Every coordinate is multiplied by three. So then this would be two times three and three times three. I could plot the new star based upon those coordinates. G, well, the first coordinate is zero. You're not gonna get a new number when you multiply three times zero. But three times 11, 33. So a scale factor is gonna change the coordinates of your shape by a process of multiplication. We're just gonna take the x coordinate and multiply by three. We're gonna take the y coordinate and multiply by three. So that's negative six, Nine. In fact, that's what happened for all of these coordinates in question one. Every x coordinate and y coordinate were multiplied by three and then we wrote down, or I wrote down, what that resulting multiplication is. Please don't need a calculator for those multiplications. Oh my dear lord. Okay, number two. Suppose the star is dilated from the origin, so that's the middle, by a scale factor of 0 0.5 and identify the new coordinates of each vertex. So literally that's all I did. I took a coordinate, where did I write it? A coordinate right here, and I multiplied the X coordinate and the Y coordinate by 0.5. Or you could also think about it alternatively as dividing by two. And when you divide by two, I got negative 2.5, negative 4.5. And so all the rest of these coordinates are the coordinates around the star that I started with, that I identified first, divided by two. Scale factor 0.5. So therefore, F at two, three, when I multiply the two by 0.5, I'm gonna get a one. And when I multiply the three by 0.5, I'm gonna get 1.5. For coordinate G, zero divided by two is zero. 11 divided by two is 0.5, or sorry, 5.5. Oh my gosh, it's gonna trip all of you up, but that's not happening live. That's only happening now in the video. Last of all, negative two comma three, I'm multiplying the coordinates by 
0.5. So negative 2 times 0.5 is negative 1. And 3 times 0.5 is 1.5. There you have it. That is our talk to talk. Here's some questions to consider. When you dilate each figure, does one coordinate or both coordinates of each vertex change? Both. That's what I did through here. You got to multiply the x coordinate and the y coordinate by the scale factor. Otherwise, you're going to get a stretching in one direction and the y direction or the x, but not together evenly. Uh, when the scale factor is greater than 1, why is the image of an enlargement bigger than the pre-image? And it's because these numbers are all getting bigger. They're all growing from whatever size they are right now into a new size, a larger size, because the number we're multiplying by is bigger than 1. When is the dilation factor uh, less than 0? When that happens, we get smaller coordinates. And so if the dilation factor is bigger than 1, the star grows. If the dilation factor is between 0 and 1, the star shrinks. We're not acknowledging the negative for right now, but that might come up in the future. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. This has been page 456. All of lesson one is done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for keeping up with the work that's been happening. And I encourage you to click forward as lesson two is next. And we continue our journey in similar figures, similar triangles, and ultimately leading towards understanding how things like sine, cosine, tangent, the concepts of trigonometry are possible. Thanks for watching this episode. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.